Welcome back, Gadgeteers. Yet another episode of Fast Gadgets. Today we're going to talk about Mac OS High Sierra. I have upgraded my MacBook 2015 to High Sierra, and I wanted to talk to you about the experiences I've had since the upgrade. I know many of you are concerned about doing this upgrade, and you've heard both good opinions and bad opinions about doing this, but I'm going to give you my take on it and what happened to me during the upgrade. For starters, I've got the MacBook Pro 2015 right back here. Right now it's running Geekbench 4, and in a couple minutes here it's going to show us the numbers, and we'll compare the Geekbench 4 results to the results I had on El Capitan, which the 2015 MacBook was running before I did the upgrade. Now, the actual upgrade itself, I did throw out a couple of live videos going through the process. It took about 45 minutes to do the upgrade. I was expecting it to take a lot longer, but it was actually pretty quick, and I had no problems whatsoever during the upgrade. Aha, you say, he had no problems during the upgrade. What about afterward? Well, I'm glad you asked that. First of all, before we get to that, let's go over some of the cool new features that are in Mac OS High Sierra. Really quickly, I'm sure you've heard about most of them. One of the big ones is the new APFS file system, which is supposed to be much more efficient and operate much faster and cleaner, and also save on storage space. Now, I'm not going to go into all the details on how it does that over HFS+. Plus, but if you want to find out, have a look around on the internet. There's a lot of great articles out there about APFS and why it's going to improve not only functionality and performance, but also security of our Mac systems. Also, Safari is much better. One of the features that it has is it will no longer autoplay videos. So if you're annoyed about those sites you visit that have autoplay videos like I am, I really do not like autoplay videos then now it will be disabled. Now, Firefox has had that for quite some time, so you've been able to disable autoplay for a while, and it's a very simple setting, but it's a very welcome setting also in Safari. Next, a very big one for me, H.265, or also known as HEVC, or basically a high compression encoding for video. Now, this will be available in some of the Pro Tools for Mac, like Final Cut Pro, but you will not see this in iMovie, unfortunately. Hopefully it'll be an update that they'll add in later because iMovie is a really great app, but uploading videos that are compressed with H.264 can take quite a while because the compression, of course, isn't as efficient as H.265. So Apple has decided that they're going to move over to 64-bit apps almost exclusively. So those apps that are currently 32-bit that get any future updates on High Sierra must be 64-bit updates, and any new applications that are designed for High Sierra must be 64-bit as well. There's a slew of application updates, but I'm not going to go through those. If you're curious, again, take a look out there. Photos is supposed to have quite an update with a lot of new filters. Notes uh, has gotten better, so it's got built-in tables now that you can use, which is another cool feature. So getting back to the upgrade, what kind of problems did I have upgrading to Mac OS High Sierra? Well, again, the upgrade went just fine, but after the upgrade, I noticed my system was a little bit slower than it was before, and I was very curious about that. So I did some research and I found that in the background, your system is doing some fine tuning and some cleanup of the disk with the APFS file system. So many have reported that at least for a while, maybe 24 hours, you may see just a little bit of a slowdown when you're using High Sierra. Now, after that, and I will grant, I waited a day or two, I have found that the system is, if not equally responsive as it was before on El Capitan, it's actually better now than it was before. So the whole point here is we've got an older system. This one's from 2015. It was in one of the more lackluster MacBooks. It was the first MacBook that came out in 2015, the newer, thinner MacBook. And I wanted to try it on an older computer just to see what would happen. Would it hurt the performance? Would it hurt usability of the computer? 
I'm here to tell you from my opinion, no, it did not. I found that my MacBook 2015 is very responsive, just as it was before, if not a little bit better, more so. And what I needed to do, it does extremely well. All right, the final scores are in on our MacBook with the Geekbench 4 benchmark results. And we have originally on El Capitan 3021 for a single core score. On the Mac OS High Sierra, I'm seeing a 3,012 single core score. The multi-core was 5,456 on El Capitan, and on High Sierra, it's 5,395. Now, depending on when I run it, if it's a fresh boot or whatever, I've seen just slight variances. I always benchmark on each OS, and I do a couple just to see how it works out. So. It wouldn't surprise me at all if I were to reboot this system and go right back to it that the and run Geekbench again, that the benchmarks would show that it's, again, equivalent or higher. So despite the benchmark being slightly slower, I've seen no degradation in performance whatsoever. I've also done some rendering of a 4K video, which did quite well. It was a seven minute video and it took about 30 minutes to render it, which is pretty good for 4K. It's rendered 1080p videos just fine, if not a little bit faster than it was doing the renders before. And I find that iMovie is very usable uh, with this older MacBook 2015 running uh, either El Capitan or High Sierra. So our story isn't going to end here. At some point with High Sierra, I do plan on upgrading my wife's uh, MacBook Air 2014. And I have a friend who has a MacBook Pro 2011, and that has 8 gigabytes of RAM that I installed in it, as well as an SSD. I'm going to do the same thing and see what happens with Mac OS Sierra, do the same upgrade path that I did with this unit, and I'll report back to you on any findings. But my personal opinion is, if you're going to do an upgrade and you're on a system that's, say, a 2014-2015 MacBook Pro, uh, 2015 MacBook or newer, at least at this point, I can confidently say that you're probably going to have a minimum of fuss and problems with High Sierra. If you did want the newer features like the disk cleanup feature, one I forgot to mention, uh, the improved APFS, which according to the documents I've read only works on SSDs. So if you have a standard HDD, you might want to consider upgrading it first to a newer SSD even if you install it yourself prior to doing the High Sierra update. Uh, but I don't believe you're going to have problems. I think you're going to find High Sierra works really well and it'll give you support for the latest apps. One of the problems that I did see with El Capitan, even though it's still supported, iMovie was not updated to the latest version. It was left off at 10.06, I believe it was. Uh, and on my newer MacBook Pro, which is running Sierra, it was getting newer versions of applications, probably like Notes and iMovie. El Capitan was not, so it's something that I see in the Linux world too. You can expect to get security updates for El Capitan, but unfortunately you're probably not going to see much more than that, so any improvements in any of the applications, overall they're probably going to be given to Sierra and High Sierra. Where does that lead people with older Macs? Well, we still have El Capitan support for the time being, so you can still continue to use those. And even after support is done, you can continue to use them for some time after that. The downside, of course, is eventually most uh, vendors basically do not update the applications anymore, so that is a downside. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'm glad you were here. If you did enjoy it, please consider liking and subscribing. And also, I really like it when you leave a comment, let me know what you think, and share the video. See you next time on Fast Gadgets.